In this video, we will solve the system of three equations with three unknowns by writing an augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form. Because we have a system of three equations with three unknowns, the augmented matrix will be a three by four augmented matrix where the coefficients of x are in column one, the coefficients of y are in column two, the coefficients of z are in column three, and the constants are in column four. Once we have the augmented matrix, we perform row operations shown here to write the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form. Because we have a three by four augmented matrix, the reduced row echelon form will be one of these three forms here, where if we have a main diagonal of ones, we have one solution. If we have a row of zero, 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 one, we have no solution. And if we have an entire row of zeros, we have infinite solutions. Each of these matrices, each of these matrices are in reduced row echelon form, which is number one, the first non-zero element in each row called the leading entry is one. Number two, each leading entry or one is in a column to the right of the leading entry in the previous row. Three, rows with all zero elements, if any, are below rows having a non-zero element. And finally, number four, in each column that contains a leading entry or one, all other elements of the column are zeros. So going back to our example, let's first write the augmented matrix. Looking at the first equation, the coefficients are two, negative three, negative nine, and the constant is negative 12, giving us the first row, which is two, negative three, negative nine, negative 12. Looking at the second equation, we have x plus three z equals six. Notice how there is no y term, and therefore the coefficient of y would be zero. So the coefficient of x is one, the coefficient of y is zero, the coefficient of z is three, and the constant is six, and therefore row two is one, zero, three, six. Looking at the third equation, we have three, negative one, four, 10, which gives us the third row. And now I begin to perform row operations to write the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form. Because we have a zero in this position here, let's interchange row one and row two. And let's also work on getting a zero in this position by working with row three and row two. Notice three minus three times one is zero, and therefore let's replace row three with row three minus three times row two. So we'll begin by interchanging row one and row two. So we have one, zero, three, six. Row two is now two, negative three, negative nine, negative 12. And now row three is going to be row three minus three times row two. So we have three minus three times one, which is zero. Then we have negative one minus three times zero, which is negative one. And then we have four minus three times three, which is four minus nine or negative five. And then we have 10 minus three times six, which is 10 minus 18, which is negative eight. Because we have a leading one here, we know the elements below must be zeros. So let's work on getting a zero in this position by working with row two and row one. Notice two minus two times one is zero. Let's replace row two with row two minus two times row one. And let's make all the elements in row three positive by replacing row three with negative one times row three. So row one stays the same. And now for row two, we replace row two with row two minus two times row one. So here we have two minus two times one, which is zero. Here we have negative three minus two times zero, which is negative three. Here we have negative nine minus two times three, which is negative nine minus six, which is negative 15. And here we have negative 12 minus two times six, which is negative 12 minus 12, which is negative 24. And then row three is negative one times row three, which gives us zero, one, five, eight. Because we have a leading one here, let's interchange row two and row three. So the second row is now zero, one, five, eight. And the third row is now zero, negative three, negative 15, negative 24. Let's continue on the next slide. 
because we have a leading entry of one here, we know the other elements in this column must be zero. Let's work on getting a zero in this position here by working with row three and row two. Notice negative three plus three times one is zero. Let's replace row three with row three plus three times row two. So the first two rows stay the same. And now for the third row, we replace row three with row three plus three times row two. So zero plus three times zero is still zero. Negative three plus three times one is zero. Negative 15 plus three times five is negative 15 plus 15, which is zero. And then we have negative 24 plus three times eight, which is negative 24 plus 24, which is also zero. Notice now the augmented matrix is in reduced row echelon form, but because we have a row of zeros here, we have an infinite number of solutions. Notice how if we were to write this third row as the equivalent equation, we would have zero x plus zero y plus zero z equals zero, which gives us the equation zero equals zero, which is always true. So because this equation contains no variables and is always true, again, this indicates we have an infinite number of solutions and the system is consistent and dependent. But let's also write the equivalent equations for row one and row two. Row one indicates that one x plus zero y plus three z equals six, or x plus three z equals six. The second row indicates that zero x plus one y plus five z equals eight, or y plus five z equals eight. Now below we're told if the answer is dependent, which it is, we're asked to find the complete solution and write x and y as functions of t where z equals t. So one way to express we have an infinite number of solutions is to introduce a new variable, in this case the parameter t, where t is any real number. So we're told to let z equal t, and now we need to write x and y as functions of t. So if we go back up to these equations here, if we solve this equation for x, we subtract three z on both sides, which gives us x equals six minus three z. And if we solve this equation for y, we subtract five z on both sides, which gives us y equals eight minus five z. But if z is equal to t, we can also say that x is equal to six minus three t. And because y equals eight minus five t, we can say y is equal to eight minus five t. Sometimes when we have a system of equations that has an infinite number of solutions, we just state there's an infinite number of solutions. Other times, we are asked to parameterize the solution and give the solutions in terms of a new variable, in this case, t. In that case, we would express the solution using these three equations. Again, we still have an infinite number of solutions because t is any real number. But expressing the infinite solutions this way does show the relationship among the three variables x, y, and z. I hope you found this helpful.